pretendo ser tu dueña, no soy nada, yo no tengo vanidad de mi vida, soy lo bueno, soy tan pobre que otras cosas puedo dar, pasarán más de mil años, muchos más y yo no sé si tengo amor, la eternidad se va a estar como aquí, en la boca llevará. Pretendo ser tu dueña, no soy nada, yo no tengo vanidad de mi vida, doy lo bueno, soy tan pobre. Good evening. My name is Dr. Teresa Hill, and I'd like to begin by welcoming you all here to celebrate the life of the amazing Raul Ralph Alvarado. As I reflect on the past eight months, I still can't believe he's gone. They always say God takes the good ones first, and with Raul, that couldn't be more accurate. I was blessed to know and work with Raul at Walden Grove for 10 years, and he's made an impact on my life, both personally and professionally. He, Rosie, and Adrian always treated me like family, and they always went out of their way to let me know I was loved. This is important to me because all my family is in New Mexico, and besides my immediate family, I have none. So when Raul took me in and showed me he cared, it, more me it meant more to me than anyone could ever imagine. I'll never forget the time he came to my office with a Coke bottle with Hill on it. He shared me shared with me how they dug through the bin forever until they found it. That poor bottle is all sucked in and the Coke is now transparent, but I proudly display it in my office. Besides my husband and my dad, Raul was the next person I shared any pics of harvesting a deer or elk. We would spend so much time talking about hunting and I was always envious about the ama of the amazing sheds he and his family would find in Seligman. You can take me anytime you want, I'm ready. <laughs> the love and genuine care Raul afforded me every day is exactly how he treated students, staff, and parents while working at the Grove. See, here at Walden, we don't consider what we do every day work. And those that we spend time with are not coworkers, they are family, and no one took that more seriously than Ra Raul. I always heard him checking in on his students, his mijos and mijas, to make sure they were okay and doing well in school. He also took the time to build relationships with all the teachers and staff at Walden, and his smile and unique laugh would always get us going. Although I had the opportunity to speak today, I wanted to make sure you all got a small taste of the impact he made at Walden. So I asked my staff a couple of questions. When asked what was one thing they will always remember about Raul, here are some of the responses I got. His forever kindness and recognition of everyone on campus. His smile and his sense of humor. His ability to make your day brighter. He always had the time to stop and listen to everyone. One staff member shared when they moved to Saudita, Raul's first conversation with her husband assured them that this was a friendly place to live in and that they were gonna like it here. Another staff member said his heart and his spirit. He shared that Raul's sacrifice helped him get medical attention much sooner than he normally would have, and he believes that is why he's still here. 
When I asked our staff what their favorite memory of Raul was, here's what they said. His amazing storytelling and sound effects. His laugh and his great advice. His, como estas, every day. All the support throughout the sports seasons, especially soccer. This person said he was one of the first people I met at SHS and he was very welcoming. Another said there isn't just one. They'll always remember how much he loves being around sports on campus. He was a wonderful man and he's very much missed. Waiting by the door during summer school to let the teachers into the building, he was smiling and genuinely happy to see us. He always went over and above to meet everyone's needs and make everyone feel welcome. A student was asked to describe the word laughter in a presentation. She immediately thought of Raul and made a video of him and his laughter because he was the best model for her to describe that word. I will never forget how difficult it was to have to tell our staff on Zoom that Raul had passed away the night before. Even though we couldn't hug and console each other, we stayed on forever, crying and just being with each other. Later that day, our school resource officer showed me a video from the camera in the front drop-off zone. At the exact same time that we started our meeting, a reflection of a heart was shown right in the middle of the camera lens. At the time that we ended our meeting, the reflection disappeared. In my 11 years at Walden, I have never seen any type of reflections or anything like this on camera. There also weren't any vehicles or objects that could have created this reflection. Well, you can believe what you want, but I know that it was Raul coming to say goodbye and to let us know he is loved. We will always remember Raul's big smile, giant heart, and amazing one-of-a-kind laugh. And I thank God for giving us such an amazing campus monitor and friend. Raul, we love you and we miss you every single day. Campus is not the same without you, but we know you're here every day protecting and guiding us. And we look forward to the day when we will see you again. Good evening. On behalf of the family, I want to thank you all for being here tonight. Today we are here to celebrate the life of Raul Alvarado. He was on this earth for 53 years, and in all those years, there was much to rejoice and to celebrate. That is evident by everyone who is here today. Psalms 12:15 says, Rejoice with those who rejoice, and mourn with those who mourn. Last week, uh, I believe it was on Thursday, I met with Rosie, and we talked a little bit about Raul and his life, and we spoke a little bit about how it is that she wanted to, or how she envisioned tonight, and how she wanted to honor Raul. She had it outlined and all set up, so she, as difficult as it was, she wanted to make sure that tonight was perfect for him. As I was preparing for tonight, I felt that the, that the Lord put in my heart one word, and that word was season. In life, we have many seasons, some good, some not so good. The Alvarado family is going through a season of grief and loss. But what I want to share with you today is a word of encouragement on how to get through the season. And for me, I believe there's only one way. It is to trust in God. The ones that trust in the Lord cannot be shaken. Hold on to your faith. Don't let your faith go. As tough as it may be, don't let it go. Faith is trusting in God when times are tough. Believing that God will see you through it. Your daily conversations and your daily prayers with God are the things that will bring you peace. Pray and pray and pray until something happens. And God will see you through. Trust God. Hold on to your faith. And pray and God will see you through. One reminder before we pray that I'd like to remind everyone is let's not waste time. Let's make sure that we are spending time with the people that we love, 
the people that love us and that we are making that extra effort to be there, not only where they need us, but sometimes just to hang out and be there because that's where love is. And we just never know. Let's bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, I come before you this evening, Lord, first and foremost, to praise you, Lord, to praise your name, to praise who you are, Father. And Lord, I come before you to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for this evening. Thank you for everyone that is here. Thank you for the family and the friends, Lord, that were able to gather here tonight to celebrate. We thank you for that. Lord, tonight I also want to pray for the Alvarado family, Lord. Father, that you will comfort them, that you will guide them, and that you will strengthen them, Lord. And that you will draw closer to them in their time of need, Father. Father, I pray for everyone here that you will continue to practice, uh, continue to protect us and keep us safe, Lord Jesus. And that you will get us all home safely, Lord. We ask that you bless the rest of this night. In Jesus' name, amen.
Good evening, everyone. My sister Joanne, that's in the audience with me, or with everyone else, advised me to take a deep breath. This is very difficult. Um, and I just want to begin by saying, go Red Wolves. <laughs> and also, a special thank you to uh, the Arizona Department of Corrections Honor Guard. Um, Ralph served honorably with the Department of Corrections. And I happen to be a corrections officer as well. Pretty much inspired by Ralph himself to somewhat follow in his footsteps. Ralph has um, been so much of an inspiration to me, not only as a young boy growing up to be an adult and further into the years, um, someone that I always look forward to uh, speaking with. We don't speak all the time, but when we did, it was very meaningful. It was a friend that, or will, will always be a friend, that um, I don't know that I'll ever come across someone like him. His brother John, he runs second. John, don't take it personal. Oh, okay, you're right there. But all the same, to all the family, the Alvarado family, um, my condolences to everyone. This is very hard to take on, as we all well know. And fortunately, I was able to see Ralph and Rosie and Adrian's first game, football game. This was back in November. And I'd always wanted to see Adrian perform because his dad always spoke so highly of him, uh, as well as his daughters, Alicia and Danny. Always spoke highly of them, brothers, sisters alike, um, the grandkids. So it was quite an honor for me to finally be able to see Adrian perform. And did he perform? I mean, they ended up winning. I believe the game was, the score was 70 to six. So Adrian was on the field quite a bit. Yeah, and he did very well. And before the game, I was only able to visit with Ralph for maybe 10 minutes. But like I said, any time that Ralph and I ever had a conversation with one another, it was always meaningful because we always talked about what we did when we were kids. And we laughed and we cried. We did all those things that mean so much to me and what meant so much to him were the things that we did together. We performed on the field from the time that we were in Little League. Um, from Little League, we went to a middle school and then on to high school. And we had formid formidable years, not so much in football. Baseball, though, was our sport. And we performed well. Ralph was always a third baseman. Right, John? He was our third baseman. He was clutch. And uh, he did very well. Did very well. And those were the stories that him and I shared together. In fact, I could look back, 2018, I was finally able to get Ralph, Adrian, and his wife to a U of A Wildcat baseball game. And Mr. Alvarado had passed just, I uh, believe, maybe a couple of months before. So I really wanted to connect with Ralph so he knew how sorry I was for his loss of his father. In the moment we saw one another, I embraced him, he embraced me, and we cried. I worked with Mr. Alvarado for 11 years as a minor, so he meant very much to me as well. Just like all of you Alvarados, I love all of you, and uh, may God be with us all. And I would just like to read from one other family friend that wasn't able to make it. His name is Pat Russell. He had sent this email to me on the night that Raul had passed. I know a lot of people call him Raul, 
I've always known him as Ralph. Either way, you know, he was always loved. Tad Putz, his brother Paul. Yes, I love that one. So this is what I'm going to read to you from Pat Russell. Life is short and yet so fast. Rest in peace, Raul Alvarado. You're going to need the rest when we take up our basketball games in the back of your house. You'll realize for a white, for a white guy, I'm pretty good at basketball. Playing with you, I had to learn how to rebound because you would never pass the ball. I must admit, during the three years we played football, you hit so damn hard every time we would make two lines to go head to head. I would look forward. I look and I'm sorry. The year the three years we played football, you hit so hard every time we would make two lines to go head to head. I would look at across and make sure you and I didn't line up. If we did, I always had to tie a shoe or stretch a muscle to skip going against you. <laughs> so, so that's how hard he hit. For a guy that couldn't put his mouthpiece in, you hit pretty damn hard. Then I heard a rumor Art Alvarado broke a helmet or something. That would be tough. Didn't they have either leather helmets back then? I am so angry at myself for not making the effort to keep in touch with you over the years. I did get news from James and your brothers when I visited home. I saw John. Oh, John, do you want to hit me? Sorry, I thought it was 1984. I think the last time I saw you was at your wedding. I do have a, a question. Was I in your wedding because you needed a token white guy? Or was I the only one that fit in the tux you had already rented? I do remember the police being called to the house the night before. Not sure if it helped or hurt mentioning you had a brother in the law enforcement, Paul. <laughs> or was it, or was that when we were outnumbered in Laughlin? Yeah, that's one other story. Lawrence could help us out. Damn Casals, don't forget anything. I bet you $5 Eugene can remember the score of the game we played in Fredonia in 1985. Growing up in Seligman, being the only white guy with red hair, wait, we had Jimmy Kennedy growing up in Seligman means so much more to me now than ever before. <laughs> it's an eternal bond, one that to this day, my wife, two sons, and daughter have equaled. Thank you for letting me be a part of your select men youth. I heard your voice the other day when I found my old yearbook. You reminded me of our toast back in the day. High, low, middle, ah! Rest up, my brother, for when I see you again, we could hang out like we did at Cares Corner or play a little basketball in your backyard. Patrick Russell, Jr. And also to the Alvarado family, for my family members that were not able to make it tonight, my sister Joanne, like I said, is here present. And the ones that weren't able to make it, they extend their condolences. And I would just like to read to you one other text, because I actually could go on and on about uh, me and Ralph's life. But we don't have the time, and there's other people here that would like to speak. <laughs> so. I'll, I'll read this one, and we'll call it good. OK, Ralph? <laughs> 
This is from my brother Joseph. He's an older brother. It reads, Casaus, toast to Ralph Alvarado, who is one of the several large families we grew up with. It was iconic as we moved through life. We celebrate through birth, life, and death. It's new dimension that we have no knowledge of. Enjoy your journey. Hope to see you and catch up. The Casauses. And I just want to add that right that knowing Ralph and the person that and friend that he was to me was always there whenever I needed him. At the drop of a hat I could call him and we would talk for an hour, two hours, and it didn't have to be every day. We could just pick up the pieces and just move on. Ralph, I love you very much. I miss you. You're not gone. You're only away. I'll catch up to you soon. I love you all and God bless. Sorry, I cannot speak from behind the podium. First of all, I'm too short. So. <laughs> My name is Roy Montoya. I'm head of security here at Walden Grove. And I worked with Raul for seven years. And uh, first time I met Raul, he was sitting on the panel that interviewed me for this job. And I wonder, what's this guy sitting here wearing camouflage shorts, a t-shirt interviewing, interviewing me for this job? <laughs> of course, once I got hired, the conversation between him and my coworker Martin Calvillo, was that we hired the Fed, the guy from the Fed, okay? And that became part of it because I retired from the federal prison system. They retired from the state system. Of course, they always bragged about it, that they were the best. But um, I came to realize how important Raul was to Walter Grove. You know, he was um, one individual that would go out of his way to help students and talk to students just about every day, which is what we do, and that's part of our job. We get to learn the students, know their manners, and Raul was good at that. And he could speak to these students and calm them down. If there was an issue, he could identify it. And that was one of the biggest pluses that Raul had. <laughs> Apart from telling stories that took forever, <laughs> you know, we used to tell him, Raul, we got eight hours, okay? <laughs> but um, one of the uh, things that uh, Raul would always tell us was that when he would go deer hunting, he would get in his little Suzuki, was it? And uh, he'd drive all the way up to Saligma. I don't know how he got there, but he got there. You know? And uh, one of the biggest things with Raul was that he would go up there and and when he'd come back, he'd tell us they didn't kill anything. I was here seven years. I never saw him bring anything back. So I know he never killed anything. Okay. So, but he showed up at work one day with a full uh, deer mount that we had in our office for a couple of years. I think Rosie just wanted it out of the house. And uh, we kept telling him, Raul, I think you got this at a yard sale. You'd never kill this deer. <laughs> He always told us that, that he went up there for deer hunting. But the most important thing, it wasn't as much as killing anything, doing anything other than being with his family. Family was very important to him. And um, that was the time that he was able to spend with his brothers and sisters up there. Okay, so, and he always talked about his children, you know, Alicia. Danny, and Adrian, that we got to know very well here because he was one of our uh, football players here. But it was very important to him that he have his family together. Okay, That is one thing he cherished. And uh, especially his grandchildren, very proud. 
He was very proud of his kids, too. And um, I told this before. I've already said this one before. Whenever Rosie would call Raul, he never said, yes, honey. Hello, honey. Eh. As I answered the phone, so Martin and I, we knew that was Rosie calling. Because he was on, eh. He would hang up, good night. I don't know why. He always said, good night. Some of the students would look at him and say, huh? You know. But um, like I say, I think uh, we here at Walden Grove, being a staff member, we appreciated Raul for his work, dedication, you know. And uh, he loved his job, you know. And um, like I said, we grew to, to together in the seven years. He became a real good friend of mine. He was always there if we needed anything. Okay. And um, when Rosie asked me to speak tonight, I had already done a couple of presentations, but I felt honored that I was able to speak for Raul here on the stories that we had. And I promised Paul I would tell one story. I said, Raul, the last hunt he went, <laughs> the last hunt Raul went to on is he came back. I guess they had a real bad storm up there. It's a lake mark wherever he went. And um, I said, Raul, we're sitting at the table in our office. I said, Raul, how was it up there? He said, well, the wind, the rain. I said, really? How bad was it? And, of course, he goes into his mode there and all of a sudden I hear this <laughs> and I'm going what <laughs> but that's the way he told his stories okay I said Raul did you shoot anything he said yeah I was there and <laughs> did you hit anything he said no I just fired yeah but we always kidded him about that little Suzuki he drove I said I think that's what you used to use to kill your deer not a rifle I don't think he could shoot so but, like I say, we miss Raul very much, and I, I appreciate the uh, opportunity to be here tonight, Rosie, with the family. I was uh, able to meet the family here a couple of weeks ago, or about a month ago, and then I met the young ladies here uh, during graduation night, you know. But uh, one of the things how Raul was, was that he cared for people, and I say he did that because the day before, or the two days before he went into the hospital, Martina and I would text him just daily to see how he was doing. And uh, one of the last conversations I had with Raul, when I texted him, how are you doing, buddy? He texted me back and he said, Rogelio, which is my given name. And I knew he was serious when he used that name. He said, take care of yourself. He knew he was sick, but yet he said that. He texted me and said, Rogelio, take care of yourself. So to me, I've always remembered that, and I will never forget it. Okay. So again, thank you all for inviting me. And again, Raul may be gone. And tonight we're not celebrating his passing. We're celebrating the life that he lived. And he lived a great life. You can tell by the family he has here and his grandchildren and all his friends that he cared for. Okay. So thank you very much. God bless you. He may be gone, but he won't be forgotten. So first and foremost, before we get started, um, I want to thank everybody from the Sawarita community, Walden Grove High School, for making this so special um, for my Uncle Ralph. I know he would appreciate it. And for those of you who don't know me, I'm his nephew, Vince Alvarado. You guys have really done a lot from the vigil that was out in front of the school. Um, you know, that was really warming to see the articles in the newspaper, um, the memorial on the wall, and couldn't think of a more deserving man. Um, so again, thank you everybody from, from Sawarita and from the Walden Grove School. Also, I want to give a shout out to the Walden Grove uh, Red Wolves, state runner up this year. I know he would be so proud of you guys. 
and that's something that you guys should be proud of as well. So nice work this year. Um, it was actually the first time I got to see Adrian play soccer was this year. Um, and I'll tell you, I got the chills when, when I went to that first game. Everybody had the RA armbands on. Um, they're doing their pre warm or their pregame warm up, their stretches, getting ready. They go to huddle. It's one, two, three, Raul. And I know a lot of my family wasn't there to see that or hear that, but it gave me the chills. Um, you know, and that was really cool to see just how big of a part of this community and school that he was. Um, another thing that my cousin Angie pointed out, so today is actually my Uncle Manny's 69th birthday, or would have been his 69th birthday. He would be the oldest brother of the family. Um, so again, she mentioned last night, it's not a coincidence that we're here celebrating, you know, your dad's birthday and, you know, the celebration of life for, for Uncle Ralph, the baby of the family. So we know you guys are up there watching over us right now, enjoying this mariachi band because you guys are killing it. Thank you, guys. Um, so I was it, it was really hard to come up with a story to tell because it was almost like breaking a code, if you think about our hunting stories. <laughs> we have a place that we call the Yellow House. It's actually blue. <laughs> uh, another place called Doe Canyon where we actually go to hunt bucks, which makes no sense place called the Red Fence, and just about every other fence in the unit we hunt is red. Um, I won't even get into the stories about Peach Springs or Spotted Owl. That's a whole nother story. Uh, we have the, about 100 places we call the High Point, and we don't really know which one we're talking about. And it will be like, you know, the one where Raul shot that big one back in like 1996. Oh, okay. I know which one you're talking about now. Um, so yeah, it was it was hard trying to come up with a story and explain it to someone who either isn't from Seligman or didn't go to deer camp with us. Um, but everybody was spot on with the you know the sound effects and the animations that Uncle Ralph would have when he would tell a story, and it was and he was running through the canyon. And, choo, 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 choo. <laughs> and if you weren't watching, he would smack you on the arm and say, "Ira." Choo, choo, choo. He had to make sure that you saw what he was doing and how the deer looked when it was running. Oh, man. And then whenever there was a shot that was taken, and I was shooting through this canyon, and pew, I reload. Ira, Ira. And you'd have to watch him. You would have to watch him. Oh, so that's one thing that I really am going to miss. You know, and, and I, Rogelio, Roy, I think, kind of talked about a little bit about last year season. So that was, uh, I was actually there for that, Roy. You know, as we talked through all night, family is, is super important to us, to him, Uncle Ralph. We're definitely uh, These mosquitoes are no joke out there. But Uncle Ralph, we, we are going to miss you so much. I don't even know how to put it into words. So just know Rosie, Adrian, Danny, Alicia. You guys, you have all of us. Uh, we got a big, loving, caring family, and we'll always be here for you guys, no matter what you do. Uh, and again, I really want to thank the Sawarita community, the Walden Grove, for everything that you guys have done to make this night special. So we love you, Uncle Ralph. Rest in peace. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. My name is Kayla, and I graduated with Adrian this year. He's my best friend. Um, I met Adrian and his family my sophomore year, and Raul was a very big part in Adrian's life, especially here at the school. He was his hero. I know he loved being able to drive to school with Adrian <laughs> and see him in the hallways. I know that Adrian will cherish those memories of him, when it was just the two of them, because not everyone got to go to school with their dad every day. High school was fun, 
and sometimes it could be tough, but no matter what we were doing, there was Raul always smiling. He would always say, hi, Mija, and that would brighten up my day. And for the longest time, I didn't even think he knew my name. <laughs> Starting our senior year, Adrian and I didn't really know what to expect. So many unknowns, and the year finally started. Adrian was excited to play football, and I know Raul was so excited to watch. Raul would go into my mom's office every day here at Walden, and, and he would talk about Adrian all the time. He would say how far Adrian kicked that weekend, what camp they were going to next, offers that Adrian was receiving, and I was so happy that Raul got to see him play this year. Um, especially when he got to wear his Team Adrian shirt this year. Um, his smile beamed on senior night and when we were crowned homecoming king and queen. He was so proud. Um, I will never forget the night Adrian called me. <laughs> when his dad passed, he, he cried. I cried. We cried together. And that, in that moment, everything changed. I can only take comfort in knowing how much Raul loved his family and how much they loved him. He was now in God's loving arms. Although Adrian and I have both graduated, Walden Grove will never be the same without Raul. He will be missed at the games, no matter the sport. He was always there, always supporting, always encouraging. Ask anyone and they will say he sincerely cared for the students. The way he walked the halls and zooming past us on his golf cart, and even the way he directed traffic after school, waving to everyone as he left. You couldn't even be mad at him. You were the one that was cut off so he could let the buses go. Walden, you know what I'm talking about. He would just stop you and smile. I remember one late night, shortly after he passed, Adrian, Isaiah, and I were in the memorial in front of the school. It was the place we came every night for weeks. It was here that Adrian felt the closest to his dad. One night he said, I just want to feel that he's here with me. And at that moment, the church bells started to ring. It was so clear. We all looked at each other and smiled because we knew he was there with us. I know his spirit will live on. It lives in legacies he left behind through Miss Rosie, Danielle, Alicia, and the entire family, and especially you, Adrian. I know you can feel him every day. Raul, on behalf of the Walden Grove student body, past, present, and future, we miss you and we will never forget you. Once a Red Wolf, always a Red Wolf. Hello, it's a family friend, and all who had the pleasure of knowing Raul. Thank you all for coming to support our family at this time. My name is Adrian Alvarado, and for those of you who may not know, I'm the son of Raul Alvarado. He wasn't just my dad, he was my father, best friend, role model, role model and the person I strive to be like. He was always helpful to anyone, family, friends, and even strangers whose car had been broken down on the side of the road. He was, the, he was the kind of person to pull over and see if they needed any help. By my dad's example, I've learned the importance of lending a helping hand whenever possible and being someone people can depend on. My dad was always a jokester, even when no one was watching. We'd go on drives together and he loved to honk and wave while we were in the middle of nowhere. Not a single person in sight. Yet he was always finding some way to be silly and bring a smile to anyone around him. He meant everything to me. And I wouldn't be the person or player that I am without him. Every day, my dad pushed me to be the best player I could on the field, as well as being the best person off the field. He was my inspiration to begin playing football. He played a bit, he played a, he played a bit of football in high school, and he would always go back on floor on who was better. I know he would want me to continue playing. 
so I decided to stick with it and play every game for him. I am very grateful for the last moments I had with my dad. Especially the last time I spoke with him. When I called him right before he got transferred to the Phoenix Hospital. Ever since he passed, it's been the hardest thing I've ever endured. But I have become stronger for myself and my family. I've learned to not be afraid of anything and to never give up. My dad motivated me to strive for everything that I want and not to back down from any challenge. Without the guidance of my father, I've had trouble deciding where and even if I want to continue to play football. I'd like to thank each college coach who saw something in me. And I'm very thankful for every single offer I received. After much consideration and recognizing that my dad would support me in whatever choice I made, I've decided that for the next two years, I'll be playing for the Sidewinders program and continue my education at Pima. I know my dad's watching over me and I hope he's proud. I'd like to thank my mom, Coach Noble, Coach Day, Coach Atkinson, Coach Freddy, teachers, faculty, and football coach and staff at Wallingo, family, friends, and all who supported me, and even those who doubted me because they pushed me to work even harder. I'd like to thank God for blessing me with so many opportunities and surrounding me with such great people. Last but not least, I'd like to thank, I'd like to thank my dad for everything he did for me, for all the early mornings and late nights he spent kicking with me working out, having fun, and teaching me about life. I would cherish all the time we had, and I will never forget all the memories we made. Again, thank you for all supporting me and my family during this difficult time. I'm forever grateful for your support, and I hope you all have a great rest of your night.